Those of you out there who use YouTube solely as a source for entertainment might not be familiar with the video I'm about to bring up. But chances are, if you've made any kind of content, especially if you're trying to break into the reviewer subgenre, you're going to be familiar with the video at hand. YouTube Copyright School, featuring the Happy Tree Friends, a video uploaded by YouTube themselves back in 2011. Unlike other videos of the same vintage, this video has maintained a pretty constant stream of views since its release. But not because it's a timeless video that everyone loves. Quite the opposite, in fact. <laughs> it's got an astoundingly crap like to dislike bar, and the comments were shut down so quickly by YouTube that even the earliest capture on the Wayback Machine shows them as closed. Nope. The reason this video gets watched so often is because it's required viewing for a YouTuber who has gotten a copyright strike on their account and wants to regain access to their channel. Here's an idea. Why not make your own video? <laughs> it's a lot like what happens if you're found to be at fault in a car accident. You have the option to take an online class in order to keep the accident off your driving record. Except where those classes are thorough and earnest in presentation, copyright school is annoying, nonsensical, and doesn't take the situation seriously at all. In fact, it spends most of its time building up a straw man argument, explaining why you're a dirty, dirty thief for having to participate in it in the first place. Let's get started with a little context. What are the Happy Tree Friends? Happy Tree Friends is a web series that actually predates YouTube itself by six years. It's basically a more violent, itchy, and scratchy type deal in which these cute cartoon animals are horrifically and graphically injured in every episode. One I vividly remember watching back in the day was this one where Lumpy the Moose gets his leg crushed by a tree and he ends up having to 127 hours his way out with a plastic spoon. <laughs> Fucked up stuff? Knowing this makes YouTube's decision to use these characters in this context pretty confusing. They aren't icons of YouTube, and they're not even letting them do the stick they're known for. YouTube is just using them purely for their innocent designs. It's like actively seeking out Eli Roth to direct an episode of Fuller House just because he's a director. I mean, yeah, he probably could pull it off, but you're not really playing to his strengths here. Now that we're all up to speed with the characters, let's get to the video itself. Ugh. The short overall is presented like an old instructional video, much like Disney's Goofy cartoons from the 50s, where the narrator is speaking to the main character, and by extension the audience. Are you forced to offer some feeble excuse for not dancing? Are you left holding the bags? and stuck with the check while others enjoy themselves? Do you have two left feet? Of course! It's here where I feel we reach our first major mixed message coming from YouTube. Keep in mind, if you've gotten to the point where you're required to watch this short, then you've been told to remove content from your channel under threat of litigation, received a strike on your channel, and been locked out of your account. Abuse of the system they're describing can and has literally brought huge channels to their knees. And what's the level of professionalism YouTube finds appropriate for the situation? Yeah. We open on our main character, Russell, the... pirate, walking into a movie theater and straight up cam ripping a movie with his phone. Something everyone's known is illegal since at least the late 90s. Look, Jerry, this is not your little comedy act. We're talking feature films here. We're talking <laughs> federal crime here. Now, I know this is intended to be a don't do what Donnie don't does situation, but since this is something YouTube forces you to watch, you end up getting the impression right away that they're sitting you down and saying, you are a Russell. Russell's misbehave. Watch the video and see what happens to Russell. You do not want to be a Russell. And the quiz taken afterwards is their way of saying, Now we understand each other, don't we? Just makes your skin crawl, doesn't it? Anyway, Russell tries to record a live performance. It's boring. Then we're treated to the highlight of the video. Their lip service to fair use. 
In the United States, copyright law allows for the fair use of copyrighted material under certain limited circumstances without the prior permission from the owner. Under the law, determinations of fair use take into account the purpose of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the work used in relation to the work as a whole, and the effect of the use upon the potential market for the copyrighted work. Other jurisdictions may have similar copyright provisions protecting fair use or fair dealing. If you are uncertain as to whether a specific use qualifies as a fair use, you should consult a qualified copyright attorney. This is the most relevant piece of information the video has to offer. And how is it treated? The summary is read as quickly as possible, literally being pushed aside while a good portion of the dialogue is drowned out by sound effects. Hey, I can make it better. This right here is YouTube telling us that they're not interested in Shades of Grey. Yeah, we know what fair use is, but you know, fuck it. It goes against the narrative we're trying to push here, so get it the fuck out of here! They even pull this shit when defining copyright at the beginning of the video. Russell gets sick and pukes at the mere concept of a copyright. We're then told about YouTube's system of manual takedowns and appeals. They go through the process of how you're notified, and how you can contest the situation. But keeping in the tone with the rest of this shitstorm, Russell's appeal is clearly fraudulent, and he knows it. Russell sends it in while maniacally laughing to himself, wringing his hands, just overall pleased with himself that he found another way to abuse one of YouTube's systems for his own personal gain. Of course his appeal doesn't work, and the narrator proceeds to go over what could happen if he misuses the appeal system. Oh no wait, no he doesn't, he just says that you could get in a lot of trouble. That's how the law works. Up until this point, the short has assumed no knowledge from the viewer in terms of copyright law. But now they're assuming that you do know what happens? Which is it? What will happen? Is someone gonna come to my house and kick me in the dick? What's gonna happen? Who knows? They don't even think to go over the consequences for a copyright holder erroneously sending a manual takedown notice to a video that's 100% fair use because, oh yeah, there are none. This is the first and only time you see the copyright holder directly interacting with YouTube, by the way. You think they'd refer to the copyright holder a little more than they ultimately do. The video should be educational to all parties involved, not just entirely focusing on shaming content creators who are literally represented by a pirate. The short's called YouTube Copyright School, not you did bad and you should feel bad. After all this, Russell finally comes to the realization that he just needs to make his own original content. The short then ends with an iris transition gouging out Russell's one good eye. <laughs> Except no, that's bullshit, I did that, because again, YouTube has no idea who these characters are. CONCLUSION! There are worse videos in terms of technical quality, and there's certainly videos that are more viscerally offensive, but this video really sticks with me. The simmering disdain I have for this video is just always in the back of my mind when I'm making videos. In this video, YouTube makes it clear that they're not on the side of content creators. This video should be the most important video on YouTube. Instead, it's treated as a joke, not only by the YouTube community, but also apparently the Happy Tree Friends animation crew themselves. Check out the time whenever Russell uses his phone. Smoke weed every day. Kudos for the subtle troll, Happy Tree Friends team. And YouTube, seriously, you couldn't have checked this before you put it out? I mean, it's not like it represents your brand or anything. <laughs> YouTube has built up a reputation of staying silent when it comes to listening to the plight of their users and their problems with the broken copyright protection system. Even the famous WTFU hashtag was only able to elicit a couple tweets from YouTube's CEO. This video is one of the only documented instances of YouTube addressing its mess of a copyright system. This, this fucking cutesy garbage that portrays violators of their system as thieves. And this is something you're forced to see! That's why, in my opinion, this is the worst video on you- Fuck!